Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today I'm going to give you an overview of the topology needed to create a hand. And what I have here is a fairly relatively simple hand model. But what it does is although it's not obviously completely realistic, it does show all the necessary edge loops in order to define all the detail needed and also all the edge loops and topology needed to extend the hand through modeling and adding edge loops in order to create a hand that fits your individual needs. And so much like I did with the previous tutorial on the head topology, I'd like to give you an overview of the topology used to create this hand. And as you can see from the, the mesh, it's not overly complex, there's not a lot of definition in the details, but there's just enough definition and enough edge loops that you can represent all of the necessary details to achieve the idea that this is a hand. And in this case, uh, the original model was used as a female's hand, but it could easily be modified for a male's hand, make it a very large hand, a short squat hand, you know, anything that you want to do, you can do based on the topology. You can very easily add new topology just about anywhere you wish, and things like that. And so, on this first model, you'll notice that everything's just gray. But like I did on the previous video, if I swap over to layer 2, you can see the same, same exact model, but with many of the primary edge loops and interest, areas of interest in the topology highlighted with different material colors. And so I'd like to just go ahead and go over a lot of these. First off, let's start with the green colors. And you'll notice that all of the ones that I've highlighted are pretty much primary loops, edge loops or face loops around individual areas of the hand that help define the overall form. And so this face loop here, I'm just going to switch into face mode. This face mode loop here is the, the definition needed to create the wrist. And so you've got the, the edge loops needed to create the, the joint between or the joint of the wrist and the hand for the forearm. Then around here, you have the topology needed to, to create wrinkles combined with the blue areas, wrinkles for the flesh, fleshy, meaty part of the hand between the thumb and the forefinger. Same thing around here. You've got this green loop and these green loops forming the majority of the, the straight or solid areas of the, of the thumb. And then the, the red areas and blue areas forming the areas of the joints. You'll notice that all of the blue areas, which I should have highlighted this one as well, are the edge loops or face loops around the areas that will deform to create the joints. And so you, you can see that I have one, two, three, and in some ways, five, five edge loops that will allow me to create the wrinkle as the thumb bends right around this joint. Same thing on the top, you'll notice that I have the red, and I have these multiple edge loops that allow me to basically expand this area as it would stretch over the bone. And you can see these same loops presented throughout the rest of the fingers, since all of the fingers are constructed in the same general way, and in fact, these three fingers are actually duplicates of each other that have then just been modified slightly, and the pinky is also a duplicate of the same, of the same original finger. However, you'll notice that I removed one of the edge loops here, since, since it's a shorter finger than the rest, it's not necessary to have as many edge loops to create the mostly rectangular squares, quads, that you see throughout the rest of the fingers. And so you can see how through these various areas I'm able to define these. But let's look in a bit deeper and look at some of the the flow that allows me to structure the hand in such a way to give me good control. Mainly let's start out with the fleshy area of the thumb. The fleshy area between the thumb and the forefinger is an area that bends a lot. You know it's pretty much just straight flesh between those joints that fills up this area between the bones and the tendons and the muscles. And so I want to go ahead and circle that area out like so to allow me to bend that any way that I want. I can squash and stretch it without having to bring these edge loops all the way down here and creating unnecessary topology in this area. So by bringing this through and then turning it around here, I can add more topology where it's meaty and fleshy and where you're going to see a lot of folding in the skin without having to bring them all the way down here where the skin is tighter. 
you can see the same thing represented in these areas that I talked about just a second ago with the the joints and the fingers by having all this topology in here and by turning these edge loops I remove net, uh, unneeded topology from these side areas of the fingers that don't need nearly as much because the skin is much tighter here you're not going to be seeing a lot of wrinkles and so I'm able to gain much better control of my topology and keep things nice and clean while still maintaining enough resolution to deform it as needed. You can see the same thing in these areas around the fingers. You'll notice that each one of these forms a, a half circle or a full circle around the fingers and this would allow me if I were to say bend this finger straight out like this I would have enough topology in this area here to kind of stretch that out and get that that smooth fleshy area right in there and so you can see that obviously repeated in each one of these areas and it's essentially the same thing as the area on the thumb the thumb just needs a little more definition than the rest of these one another two areas that I would like to point out where the topology turns is right here around the base of the thumb Again here, since we have a joint right here, it's, it's helpful to add some geometry that will help define that joint and allow us to make that shape naturally without having to just add a bunch of extra topology in here that would otherwise clutter up the mesh. And so by bringing this topology down around the thumb and then turning it around that joint, I'm able to lower the topology count throughout the rest of it. As you can see, you know, if I did not turn this here, then I would need to bring each one of these down and continue on through the mesh and so you can see obviously how that would create a large amount of more topology and in fact it would we'd have uh, one more loop here another one here and then another two loops right in this area as well since each one of these is essentially a diamond that is going from one loop to three loops so another area that we're doing the exact same thing but on a little smaller scale is right around here which you can see the ball joint in the wrist and by turning the topology here I'm able to wrap around that ball joint and so naturally form the topology in that shape. A lot of people may find it uh, better to can have a full uh, mesh loop around this area such that you would have these faces right here. Just modify this real quick form into a face like that and I'm not going to argue that point however I do think that it works just as well doing it this way because it gives you a little more topology to play with up in here that otherwise you would have to add through another edge loop down the entire length and so by having this edge here which is then being turned I'm able to just pull it out and define that circular edge that is mostly seen on the wrist side of the hand and then it just kind of blends into the flat flat side of the palm right here or not the palm but the side of the hand and so you can see also how I have these face loops coming down right along the edge of the, the, the hand that I was just talking about that creates that meaty flat area so all of these different areas combined with their turning topology allow me really fine control of how the entire hand is structured and allow me to form all the different shapes on it if you find yourself struggling with the hand for not even just in the beginning but for some time don't feel bad because it is one of those areas of the body that is particularly troublesome to model uh, it the he the head the ear and the foot are probably the the four most troublesome areas of the human body to model for most people anyway and the hand in particular because it's very very easy to make a hand look very unnatural and in fact you know this one doesn't look obviously is not realistic enough to to be real and it's maybe a little unnatural in areas but it feels mostly like a hand but it could definitely of course use some more work and a large part of that is due to some of the shape but also to there's not enough topology to make a realistic hand but that was not the goal of this the goal was to create a a fairly stylized semi-realistic hand that felt felt like a hand but not realistic and so that's why you don't see more topology and more realism in this but like I said if you find yourself struggling with a hand don't 
don't feel bad about it. Don't get down on yourself. Just keep working at it. It's one of those areas that I highly encourage you to try and model on multiple times. It's very tempting, and I am definitely guilty of this, of reusing old hands on new models all the time and never giving yourself the time to practice a new hand each time. And I, I know that it's tempting, and I definitely do it myself from time to time, but if you have the time, go ahead and model your hands from scratch each time, as it will improve your modeling every single time. Your hands will continually get better and better, and it will come more naturally. You know, the hand is, is very, very scary at first, but it's one of those things that, like the ear in particular, with practice, is more cumbersome than it is troublesome after a while because it is definitely a lengthy process to create. One last point that I would like to point out that's not highlighted in this mesh are these three faces right here. And these three faces, if you'll notice, are the diamonds that I've talked about before that are going from one to three edge loops. And again, in these areas here, but I'm not too concerned about those at the moment. And what these do which, although you won't see it in this model particularly, but if we were to go in and add a bunch more edge loops, these are some of the faces that would help control your topology and these mesh structures if you were to add in more topology for all the tendons going from the fingers. So for example, if you were to add, even though I won't because they go the full length, but if you were to add a couple of loops down here, a couple of loops here, or even just one, you could then add in the extra definition for the tendons coming from the fingers and then terminate some of those extra edge loops with diamonds such as these in this area, this area, etc. And so if you're a citizen member or if you purchase the source files for this, I highly encourage you to go ahead and study the mesh structure if you're not familiar with it. Find other hand models that appeal to you, study their mesh structure, and then just work through it multiple times. Because it's if anything, even if you don't like character modeling or if you just want to ignore hands for the time being, regardless of what it is, the hand is an excellent exercise in topology and controlling your topology, keeping everything clean, keeping yourself from using triangles and things like that. Uh, I can guarantee you that as you model hands, one thing that you will find particularly bothersome and a pain is, is triangles in your mesh because it's you generally need a lot more topology in the hand than you do in the wrist, forearm, etc. And so being able to model it without using any triangles, as in fact this model does, because this actually connected all the way up to the forearm using the same amount of topology, I just removed the, the rest of the model so that we could focus on the hand, is, is very difficult at first. Uh, and it takes some time to figure out how to work with the topology and to create those edge flows. And that's where things like these turning edges, these turning edges, and these diamonds, and the diamonds on the bottom as well, here and here, really help control your topology and help decrease the total number of polygons needed to create the entire hand and create it on down to the wrist. And so it's a very, very good exercise in topology. It's difficult at first and difficult throughout a lot of it. Uh, I know if I, for one, definitely still struggle with it from time to time. I don't know that there's anyone that doesn't. You know, obviously it comes more, more naturally or at least with more ease to some people than others. But I encourage you to give it a shot, practice it, uh, post results online, get some critiques, and keep working through it. And happy blending.